Mr. Gibson here. We're going to do a little drawing on our iPad today using the application Autodesk sketchbook. So let me switch over to my other screen so you can see that. Okay, so here's the iPad menu. Um, to get Autodesk sketchbook, you'll need to go to the app portal. Once the app portal loads up, you're going to either search for your app in the search button, Autodesk. Um, sketchbook, or you can just scroll down and find it. Click Autodesk Sketchbook, and then hit the Install button. Wait for it to install. Once it's installed, go ahead and launch the app. All right, and so whoop, this is your basic, um, let's clear this, <laughs> start a new sketch. This is the basic look um, of the app. You can see I'm pinching my screen to get this to shrink. And so you can see my actual image surface. So let's do a little um, a little tour on what we're looking at here, okay? And so on my screen, we'll talk about this button first, okay? So this is your menu button. The menu button opens up the options for new sketch, gallery, and you can share it. And this is the save, or not, sorry, the preferences, which is um, lots of different options. I'm in here to adjust settings. I would not mess with this right now, um, but that is where that's at. This is your undo button. This is your redo button, right? These are your transforming and selecting buttons. These help you change the size of things on your image layer. We'll talk about this images in a, or layers in a minute. Um, this is your paint fill bucket. This is your tool um, options. You have uh, rulers and curved rulers. And this is an ellipse tool, which is really handy. Um, this is your symmetry button. This will allow you to work in different symmetrical um, situations on your paper or your surface, I should say. This is your tool, um, sorry, shape tools, circle, square, and line. This is your um, predictive stroke. This kind of stabilizes your, um, your lines. And then this one right here is an upload image. This is your perspective tool, which is really handy for drawing in one and two and even three point perspective. This here is to add text. Um, this is a pretty cool feature only on the iPad and that is a record function. So when you um, tap that, it will record everything that's going on on your screen here. So that's really nice. And then this button, that's really handy. You push that and that makes everything go away. Your slider options still stay intact. So as you can see, the slider still works and my flow or size will still work. Okay, and so you can see that available to you here. Okay, this right here is um, called the puck and this can be moved around. Basically the top bit is for your, um, your brush library. Also by pushing and holding on this, I can change my size. I can change my flow and right, right in there. And then the one below, that's your color picker. When I touch that, I can choose my colors and my Copic library is in here as well. I can also touch and hold this to change saturation, all right? And if I go up or down, I can change luminosity. All those are easily changed here within the um, square, but if you want quick access to it, you can just touch. Um, what I'm doing is I'm clicking on here and I'm dragging. So when I click and drag out, I can adjust this option. Um, some people um, don't like the puck. I personally love it, but if you need to, there's other options down here on the iPad. And so when I touch that, I will open up some options. Okay, option um, for the color puck or the uh, tool puck is right here. And so if I tap that, I can make it go away. And I guess it's called the double puck in, on the iPad. And I can tap that to bring it back. Okay, other options on here are last brush. Okay, I can make a transparent color. This is your color picker. So if you want to pull a color off of what you're seeing on the screen, right? And then this right here, that's your flip canvas. So if you want to flip the canvas, you can do that. And so that's another option menu here available to you on the iPad, right? And so moving around the screen, um, we have this right here. This is your tool tray. Your tool tray is where all your tools are located. And then the, these slider bars here are some quick options, which are also accessible on the double puck as well. But there's just a lot of quick ways to get the things on here. And that's really handy. Above here, we have our brush library and brush editor. 
So we can go through here and we can change settings and we can go through the different brushes. If I want to pin a different tool set to this tool tray, I just need to click the thumbtack button. And under the thumbtack button, that puts that tool tray into that category. I do have to select a brush on there first and then I can decide that's what's on my tray. Um, it starts out with your basic tray. So that's where it, the default setting is. Um, and then once again, from my brush library, I can also access those settings from this area as well. And so that is my um, setting and brush library button right there. Um, and so your puck has that options. Your sliders are all here. So this all kind of goes together. So you can decide what works best for you um, and what is more comfortable for you. And so that's, that's how you make those arrangements. Okay, so moving over to the layer bar. Layer bar is really critical. You understand the layer bar and working in layers is a digital art thing. And so you need to get comfortable with a layer system. And so to create a layer, you would touch the plus button. Okay, and that would add layers to my list. And then to get rid of a layer or to edit an individual layer, what you will do is touch that layer. And then when I touch it again, it'll bring up these options. And so I can duplicate, I can cut this, I can clear this layer, I can merge all these layers to one layer, I can delete this layer, lock it. The locking button is also quickly accessed here. Um, you can also hide the layer with the clicking the eye or unclicking the eye to make it visible. Okay, so these are ways for you and you can even label these with a color dot, which is a pretty handy way. If you start getting a lot of layers on here, it can get a little confusing, okay? So that is the layer option. Basically, you're just clicking with your finger. I'm using a mouse here, but I'm using my finger on the actual iPad. And so I can just delete these layers. Um, or add them. I can also um, adjust their spot in the order. So if I want to make this the first layer, I just click and hold on it um, and that will open that up and now I can bring that down. Okay. And so down here, this first one, this is actually your work surface color. So this will decide what um, color your paper surface is. And then kind of imagine the rest of these up above as clear paper. Each one of these is a clear layer surface and you can create whatever you want on there, but you will see right through them to the bottom layer. So if you want the very first layer um, to be a color, you can do that here. Um, there is a color picker as well down here. I can switch this over to color and have quick access to some colors right here as well. And so this just switches back and forth between colors and layers for another way to choose things right there. All right, so that's your basic rundown on how this works. Um, we'll go over the, the specifics of the tools on a different video, but this is the iPad tutorial on just how to find everything and where it's at, okay? So stay tuned for the next video for more specific details on how to use your layer editor and how to use the different brushes to create art, okay? And so let me clear this out so you can see me, all right? Okay, so hopefully that worked out for you. Um, watch the next video on how to get into more details on this app.